through January 2026, the island will welcome its premier agricultural school, the Barbados Institute of Food and Agriculture, or BIFA. Construction is progressing steadily on a 45-acre site at Hope St. Lucie. The institute is being built in partnership with the government of the People's Republic of China, a key part of Barbados' effort to modernize agricultural education and boost national food security. HOPE is going to be our agricultural institute that will help to provide agricultural science training for our students at the tertiary level. And this will help replace the efforts that are ongoing at SJPI, BCC, BVTB, all gathered in one division. It is our hope that eventually that agricultural institute will become part of our university college. So Barbados is now set to be able to reach out and refresh and renew our farming community. Many of our farmers are over the age of 55. We are hoping that with the establishment of these two institutes, we are going to be able to refresh our farming population by offering young people the opportunity to learn smart climate agriculture, to give them the opportunity to specialize in any area of agriculture that they're interested in, as well as we are going to be able to retool our existing farmer population. Along with that, we'll be able to provide the Ministry of Agriculture with all of the skills that they need. We have a relationship that we're building with the University of the West Indies at St. Augustine, and this will allow us to offer from a general certificate through to a diploma, through to a bachelor's degree, master's, postgraduate studies, all of these will now be available to Barbadians right here in Barbados and in conjunction with St. Augustine UWI. So we are looking forward to receiving the property at Hope. We are hoping to receive that by September and we want to look forward to starting our classes in January 2026. This has been a gift to the people of Barbados by the Chinese. And we want to sincerely thank them for making this tremendous investment that will help to take agriculture, agricultural education, and food security further along its path. Barbados stands to benefit from this project in ways that we cannot imagine. Um, in this 21st century, if you're not moving into the era of technology and innovation, you are not going to be able to keep pace and I have personally seen for the past seven years how our stakeholders have really struggled with the requirements of a 21st century agricultural sector. And therefore, at the core of all of it is training. And the fact that we can now train our people to transition them from the past to a modern era that speaks to how we are now going to be able to continue the great work we've done. And you all do know that Barbados was one of the leaders in agriculture. Back in the day when sugar was king, also back in the time when cotton was great. And those days are long past us. But what we do have for us now is an opportunity to use our young minds to get them to take us to where we need to go to in terms of agro-processing. And that is the reason why the training that will take place here will give us that opportunity to train up our people and then over at Chooks to get people who are involved in agriculture to see it as a business and to be able to treat it as such. Having every confidence that what they're doing will reap them return on investment. And that Jukes project is, I mean, we can talk all we want. It is exactly what is required to give people an opportunity to feel and, and experience uh, what it's like to turn a primary agriculture product into an actual value chain product. And these to me are the critical things that a government needs to do. And I'm pleased to be part of this administration working with Minister Husband uh, to make sure that this becomes a reality for Barbados. Uh, improving food security has its limitations. With this um, facility now we can look at scale. Previously uh, you had a lot of things happening. And it's a fairly complex and highly dynamic um, environment. On one minute you have too much of a crop so you got spoilage and another minute you don't have enough so you got shortages. 
those matters will be solved right here now once we have a facility like this because you're not just looking at primary product you're looking at how you can move that product through to storage improving shelf life teaching people how to be able to process you know it's 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 the answer to all the challenges that we've been having the barbados institute of food and agriculture isn't standing alone also set to come on stream is the new agri-industrial park a partnership between the University of the West Indies and the Government of the People's Republic of China. At Duke's Plantation in St. Thomas, a state-of-the-art agro-processing facility is taking shape, featuring a living laboratory for applied research. At Duke's, we have some 28.5 acres and about 13 buildings, and this will be given over to the University of the West Indies, where they will find the opportunity to be able to do the type of agricultural research that we can innovate, develop new products, that we can provide skills training in various areas that are important for agricultural production, where we can do agro-processing, and all of this is going to help support us in being able to develop export-led growth in agriculture, as well as in agro-food processing. So there's going to be a continuous relationship between the Ministry of Training and Tertiary Education and UE in that effort at Dukes. Progress may have slowed briefly in the early stages, but the project is now advancing steadily. What we've had over the time that it has been under construction, we've been able to set up a number of the buildings. At the moment, the government is now installing the electricals and a couple of other utility services for the property. And then the Chinese are going to finish the building in providing us with a number of additional elements to help make that project work really, really well. So we're very pleased that we are continuing that process to bring us to completion. The goal isn't just to train, it's to transform. With facilities like BIFA and the Duke's Agri-Industrial Park, Barbados is laying the foundation for a new generation of agri-entrepreneurs who can take their produce from the ground to global markets. But the vision goes even further, one that reaches into our tourism sector, our homes, and even our health. We're certainly going to be a leader because there's only one facility in the region similar to this, and I don't think that is at the same scale as this one. Uh, and equally, uh, we're going to have an opportunity now for people to be able to look at what they can export. So if I wanted to create an Indarware brand to export, Here's the opportunity now at Jukes for me to be able to do that. So that we now start to, to realize that we can now have a society of entrepreneurs in agriculture due to the training that Minister has been made available to us, but equally because they can now see the real business and because they have had the opportunity to experience the training and the use of the technology, the agro-process and seeing what it really means to go to the value chain. That is where we're going to have a different society. And that is where the enfranchisement, economic enfranchisement that we've been speaking about clearly kicks in with our people. One of the things we want to tackle is to be able to help the hotel industry to start to use the produce that we produce. But they can't do it right now because we've not been able to get our farmers to be able to operate in a way that gives them sustainable sizes, quality, and so on. So through the tree training of our farmers and then the new farmers coming up is going to empower Minister Ware to be able to work now with the Ministry of Tourism and the hotel industry and the restaurants to be able to use some of this produce which we are going to be looking at. And because of how we're doing it, they're going to be able to do the bulk production by using smart techniques you're not using as much of the open field, you're going to be able to produce a lot more on smaller spaces. So it means the volume is going to be possible. But what is of even greater interest for me is that the average householder can come and take a short course. Someone who wants to grow something in their backyard can come and get a short course. And through that means, we are going to be able to empower every household, if they so desire, to be able to produce some of their own food. Now think about what this is going to mean in terms of the cost of living. 
which as a government, we've been very committed to see how we can help Barbadians to reduce their food costs. Think of what it means about people consuming fresh food, the NCDs, and what we're hoping is that by involving the children from early, that within the next five to 10 years, we will begin to beat down the NCDs because children now will be eating what they grow. With January 2026 on the horizon, the Barbados Institute of Food and Agriculture is set to shape the island's agricultural future. Together with Duke's Agri-Industrial Park, these projects promise new opportunities for growth, innovation and sustainability for Barbados and the wider Caribbean.